Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, in this tutorial, we are going to focus on some important fundamental concepts of DeepXT. Specifically, we are going to focus on setting up governing differential equation, titulate and Neumann boundary conditions. Along the way, we will also introduce two important concepts called Jacobian and Hessian, which are very essential concepts in uh, DeepXT library. We will use this uh, Jacobian and Hessian function to evaluate uh, first and uh, second order derivatives. Let's get started. So this is the governing differential equation that we are going to solve today. This is a basic uh, 1D Poisson equation. So it is defined in between minus 1 comma 1 boundaries. So if you define it like this, so this is your left boundary and uh, this is your right boundary okay on the left boundary we applied a ditchlet boundary condition of uh, u of minus 1 is equals to 0 this is our uh, center and uh, this is our minus 1 and uh, this is our plus 1 so on the right boundary we introduced a Neumann boundary condition this one du by dx at x is equals to 1 that is here is equals to 4 this is the Neumann boundary condition that we are applying in this uh, physics informal neural network problem okay and uh, this is your uh, exact solution u of x is equals to x plus 1 whole square so we are not going to use this uh, exact solution anywhere in our uh, physics informal neural network we will use this exact solution in the end to compare our uh, physics informal neural network solution with the exact solution to see its efficiency how far our prediction is better or not so for that we are going to use this uh, exact solution these are our uh, basic uh, libraries that we are using in this tutorial mainly the DeepXD, NumPy and Matplotlib. So if you look at here in our previous tutorial I have used TensorFlow as the backend from DeepXDA.backend import TensorFlow but in this today's tutorial I'm going to use this uh, PyTorch. See how I'm setting up this uh, PyTorch backend. So PyTorch backend is set up using this uh, function dd means dpxt dot backend dot backend name so if you change this to pytorch now your backend is pytorch actually and next is to set up this governing differential equation if you look at this governing differential equation we have d square u by dx square is equals to 2 we have one second order derivative how to define this in dpxt like this right simple so we defined a pd function and dy underscore dxx this is a normal variable that we have created but how to evaluate the second order derivative is this so within the deep xta library we have a gradient module within that gradient module we have a function called hessian using this hessian function we will evaluate the second order derivative of y with respect to x so this is our uh, main independent variable the function and so this is our main dependent variable the function and this is our independent variable that is x so here we are using this hessian function actually so what exactly is this hessian so if you look at uh, the basic mathematics of what are hessians and uh, Jacobians so these are two important concepts in this uh, governing differential equation setup actually so so in simple terms Jacobian represents first order derivative and Hessian represents second order derivative so if it is a scalar function so Jacobian represents simply dy by dx if it is a multivariable function like f of x comma y so Jacobian in that case will be a vector of partial derivatives with respect to each variable we will see in a minute and similarly if it is a scalar function the Hessian represents a simple second order derivative meaning d square y by dx square order but if it is a multivariate function like uh, this one f of x comma y then hessian is a matrix remember this so in a scalar function so the jacobian and uh, hessian are simple scalar values but if it is a multivariate function then jacobian is a vector and hessian is a matrix that includes all possible second order derivatives for example imagine this function f of x is equals to x square plus 3x so the first order derivative is simple df by dx that is 2x plus 3 and the second order derivative is uh, d square f by dx square that itself is 2. These are our uh, Jacobian and this is our Hessian as simple as it is. But if we have a multivariate function like this f of x comma y is equals to x square plus xy plus y square. So it has two independent variables x and y then the Jacobian is this 
a vector consisting of two elements. First one is dou f by dou x. Second one is dou f by dou y. Those are this. And Hessian is a second order matrix that consists of all possible second order derivatives. So if you take up this function, how many uh, possible second order derivatives are available? So we have dou square f by dou x square, dou square f by dou y square, dou square f by dou x dou y, dou square f by dou y dou x. So these are all the possible second order derivatives. So we will arrange them in this format. Then we get this Hessian matrix actually. But in our today's tutorial, so we have considered a simple scalar function that is d square u by dx square. It is an ordinary differential equation actually. So then we just use the hessian dd dot grad dot hessian so for example if you want to evaluate d cube u by dx cube so what will you do so what we are going to do is first we will do one hessian that gives you the second order derivative and we are going to apply one additional jacobian for that so in total we get um, d cube u by dx cube Likewise, to evaluate uh, the derivatives of any order, we will use this uh, Jacobian and Hessian in combination with each other. This is how we set up uh, this governing differential equation. So after we evaluate this uh, d square y by dx square, that means dy by dy underscore dxx variable, then the setting up is easy. So this function returns the value dy underscore xx minus 2. And this is our uh, original governing differential equation and next we will see how to set up this ditchlet boundary condition if you look at any boundary condition whether this or this it has two main things actually so when you say x x represents all domain values starting from here to here but of these values so which values are on the boundary meaning this is our ditchlet boundary right so of those x values what are the x values that are on the left boundary that is defined by this function and uh, if you know a value is on the boundary then what is its value that is defined by this boundary value l l means left that's it so these three are most important elements in defining this ditchlet bc so in the within the deep xd library we have a module called icbc module within that icbc module we have this uh, ditchlet bc function so this ditchlet bc function takes three primary arguments the first one is the geometry second one is the boundary value l and the last one is the boundary L. So this is a Boolean variable. So it tells whether the given X value is on the boundary or not. So how did we get that value? So these are the input, all possible input values. And this one is on boundary. This is either a true or false. Okay. So we will get, if it is a true, we will set up the return statement like this on boundary and DD utils is close the given x value is close to minus one or not that's it minus one defines the extreme left end that's it right so since it is a only problem only minus one is on the left boundary actually and plus one is on the right boundary when we have only two points one is on the left boundary and the other one is on the right boundary so that's how we define this uh, left boundary condition so you got it right so ditchlet boundary condition has three important elements mainly the geometry boundary value L and boundary L. So this is a Boolean variable and this is the value of the boundary condition. That's it. Similarly, if you take up this uh, Neumann boundary condition, so this Neumann BC is also available in this ICBC module. This function also takes three primary arguments. First one is the geometry, boundary value and the boundary condition. So in these two conditions, so geometry variable is same. So geometry defines the overall geometry and boundary condition is same. Same meaning it is a Boolean value that checks whether the value is on the specified boundary or not. So how we specify this boundary like this. So if you look at here, how are we specifying the boundary? So we are specifying the boundary like this, whether the given coordinate of X is close to plus one or not. That's it. So that's how we check the boundary. If the x value is lying on the boundary, then this function returns true. So then whenever the x value, this boundary gets true, then it applies this boundary condition on it. Okay, that is it. But what is the difference between uh, this Ditchlet BC and uh, Neumann BC actually? So if you look at the Ditchlet BC, it just puts 
the boundary value is equal to simple the value that we specify that is either a zero or something whatever it is it will just put u of minus one or plus one whatever it is if it is a digital boundary condition it will just apply the boundary condition on the primary variable but if it is a neumann boundary condition it should apply the boundary condition on the first derivative of that variable at this specified uh, uh, boundary location so keep this in point digital boundary condition applies on the main primary field variable Neumann boundary condition is applied on the first derivative of the primary field variable that is the main difference actually okay but in terms of function definition Neumann boundary condition and the Dichlet boundary condition we define it in the same way but internally deep xt applies it on a different uh, categories actually Dichlet basis directly applies on the primary field variable that is u whereas this uh, Neumann boundary condition applies the boundary condition on the first derivative of the primary field variable that's it so that's how we define uh, the governing differential equation and uh, the Dichlet basis and the Neumann basis in deep xt so only three commands so nothing more than that so first we define the PDE and we define this Dichlet basis and we define this Neumann basis that's it and uh, within the deep xt this is how we define the digital basis so this is the command so a neumann bc also shares the same command like this one okay but after defining this uh, governing differential equation and uh, digital and uh, neumann boundary condition we have to combine these three into a problem that problem is defined by this data module so what is this data if this data combines our geometry with this PDE and this left boundary condition and the right boundary condition that's it and we will use this data in setting up this model and this net is a simple neural network in our coming tutorials we will go into each aspect of this problem by example by example so in this tutorial we are confining ourselves to the definition of governing differential equations and Dichlet and Neumann boundary condition and these uh, neural network parameters like the layer sizes activation function I'm using some default values so this layer size is defined like this in an encrypted way so here one and the last one represents this is the input layer and this is the output layer input layer we just have x and the output layer we just have u but within that we are considering three hidden layers each hidden layer with 50 neurons and tan h activation function and glorot uniform initializer and using these variables we are setting up this fnn variable fully connected neural network okay and we are passing this uh, net and uh, this data into this model deepxte dot model okay and this model is our uh, main neural network object actually and then we are setting up the compilation parameters in the compilation parameter we are using this uh, atom optimizer and the learning rate is set as 0 0.001 and we are using this uh, l2 relative error and then we are issuing this model dot train with some 10,000 iterations okay when we issue this we will get this uh, train loss test loss and this test metric so here if you look at this train loss we have three parameters here is actually so what are these three parameters so the first parameter is the PDE loss second parameter is the digital BC loss and the third parameter is the Neumann BC loss so like that so while you are uh, training so at zero iteration these are your uh, pd loss and uh, digital boundary condition loss and the neumann boundary condition loss okay and while you are testing the problem so these are your losses in this uh, pd digital boundary condition and uh, the neumann boundary condition and this test metric what is this test metric this test metric is this l2 relative error after that at the end of uh, 10000 epoch this is your uh, overall train loss this is your overall test loss and this is your overall uh, test metric overall the training took uh, 10.3 seconds so it's fairly less and uh, here i am taking two sets of x values one for evaluating the pin prediction and one for evaluating the exact value so why i am taking two steps means just to clearly demonstrate the analytical and the pin solution in this particular example we have got an exact match so for example it doesn't matter you can take 100 as well but when you take 100 it goes like this actually so to avoid uh, this kind of uh, superimposition i just took 20 values here just for the demonstration purpose so when you use this model dot predict with the x values so you will get the y predictions from this physics informant neural network 
the one that we just trained before okay and after that we use this uh, function to get this uh, exact values so given the y prediction and the exact values so we plotted like this here actually so if you look at here the solution is uh, fairly matching the pin prediction is matching exactly with the uh, exact solution that's it uh, for this tutorial hope you got some understanding about how to define the governing differential equation ditchlet boundary condition and the neumann boundary condition if you have any questions or uh, feedback please leave a comment below do not forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials so thanks for watching